Hi, I'm Miriam from FunFTC, and I'm here with Team 21774 Supernova.exe. This team had a very deep run in the Chesapeake Championship, making it all the way to Division Finals, and they also have a very unique robot. Let's jump into it on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Isaac, so can you please start out by talking about how your team approached the game this season? Yeah, so... Uh, the first thing we did this season was we conducted a points analysis. We needed to determine what we thought would be the best uh, most, and most valuable things to accomplish because we knew we wouldn't be able to do everything with, limit, with limited time. All right, so that makes a lot of sense. So, Vanufa, do you want to start off with some of the decisions you made with that, maybe starting off with your claw? Sure. So before we actually got into designing, we all sat down and we took some time to just draw out our ideas, what we think to do. Active intakes are great, but they jam a lot. So we wanted to make something as fast as one, but without the side issues. So here we have our, here we have Scorpio's claw. So our claw has, it uses servos on each side individually. So it could, so it could, um, move each side by itself. Yeah. And underneath the claw, underneath it, it has, it's in the shape of a pixel. And this is to force the pixel to, against the aligner to force it into position. And that really helps us grab tightly. So then our claw also has a flap on top of it. So this flap is helpful in many different ways. For example, in auto, our flap helps us intake from the stack without knocking it over. And this is super helpful because we don't want to run over a pixel because that'll create a lot of problems later on. Another other thing our, claw, our flap does is that originally, if you're just holding a pixel with something like that, it can tilt up and down. Our, our flap prevents that and allows for a better and tighter grip. All right, and can you talk a little bit about the iterations um, that your claw has gone through throughout the season? Yeah, so over here, we have some of our iterations. For example, our first one is actually this, and as you can see here, it's actually not balancing on the flat part, which is right here. It's not balancing on that, and instead it's balancing on a curve. This is super unstable, and this aligner actually has no way to mount itself and the holes aren't even the right size. So then we moved on to make some more iterations. For example, this is our second one. This now you can see it would balance on pixel. It would balance on the flat part, making it more stable, but the screw extrusions on the bottom were a small issue. So then we have this, which has an extrusion on the bottom and that will allow the screw heads to be fine, and then also intake. Our last and final claw pincer iterations are right there, and yeah. So for our, so the next part of our claw is our aligner. So our aligner allows us to intake fast, easily, and it's accurate. For example, our aligner allows us to individually manipulate each pixel, allowing us to make mosaics. It's a great sensor mount, plot and the um, middle stick right there allows us to fix mosaics if we need it and that's super helpful all right and then i do you see so you talked about all these iterations so what process did you have to go through to determine uh what iterations you needed to make further yeah so we started off catting on on shape to see what we can do like get our ideas out there then we printed them using a 3d printer and regular pla filament and then we tested, and then as you can see here, these pincers are actually broken, and that was a part of our test process. 
because we want to know, is this strong enough to withstand a hit? Because our claw is going to be right at the front of our robot. So then we kept doing that, and we kept finding problems and then solving them to get our final iteration. Great. And now that your pixels are in your robot, can you talk a little bit about how you get them onto the backdrop? Yeah. So first, this whole assembly is connected to the slides using two Axon servos, Axon Max servos. Great slides. Okay. So they're mounted right here and allow the arm to swing up and down. Yeah. This angle is parallel to the backdrop, so we can easily um, outtake. So about the so for the servos here, we originally had Gobo the torque server servos. But we found that whenever we crashed into like the perimeter or another robot or like any sort of collision easily broke it. So we upgraded. So we now we don't have that problem because it took a while for us to fix. And over here, we have our two stage BWT link slides and the motors that power them are right here on the sides. Originally, we had Gobo the Turk so torque servos, but we found that that was second sevens going up and second second seven seconds going down. And then when we switched to mode 312 motors, it was only one second. And that gave us an 85% increase. Great. And so now that you've had the match, uh, what happens during your end game? Like maybe your drone? Yeah. So our drone over here. It uses tubing right there, as Isaac did, to pull it back. And this is the 3D printed part that will push and launch the drone. So if I put that in right here, this part will launch the drone. And then to hold, to tension the servo in, we also use tubing right there. And the good thing, the nice thing about our drone is that it has an inbuilt cover so the drone won't fall out. Because for our previous iterations, there was no cover and like it was a real struggle to keep it in the right spot. And I noticed that you launched your drone sideways. Is there a reason for that? Um, the biggest reason for that was the space and the width. Like, for example, one of our old drone iterations over here that uses, that uses rubber bands to pull would be way too large to like mount right there. And it would extend over the 18 inches limit. And this is another one which we had where it would slide using springing. The sizing for both of those was way too big and we found that we couldn't do that. And for this one, mounting it like 90 degrees turn, the servo would stick out and then, yeah. Yeah, and then after your drone is launched, uh, how do you hang on the rigging? So we use a lead screw here to hang and So it uses a servo right here and linkages to swing up and down. And this was to stay in the 11 inch, um, in the 12 inch uh, stage door limit. So then it'll go up, suspend using this wedge and to hang right over the center of gravity. And the reason we did this was because originally we didn't have that and it wasn't an obvious hang because our robot was tilted. So when we stopped power, our judges confused it and once they didn't score it and we didn't want that mistake to happen again. So we added this wedge to, for the robot to pull itself up to this spot right there. So now it can hang over the center of gravity and the robot will hang parallel to the ground. So our judges will not mistake, will not not score our hang again. Great. And now I'm sure equally as impressive as all of your hardware is your software. So Isaac, do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So. Uh, so this year was was pretty hard for our drivers, especially since having an act having a passive intake made it pretty hard to um intake pixels. So our biggest driver enhancement this year was probably this. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to show. Um, it's kind of hard to show right now if it, without the robot moving. But when we go go in, the the, the claws automatically close making it a lot easier. However, a problem we were having with that is actually that when, is actually that when we would 
was that when we would release was that when was that when we would release it wouldn't it wouldn't release because it would would immediately try to close again we were able to we were able to solve this by just by making it so when we by when we like uh, drop our pixels when we're when it's up we don't we don't have we don't use that system the next driver enhancement we have we also re also relates to the claw or also relates to pe pixels because because it was hard to see, it was hard it was, because of the robot and the wing being all the way uh, across the side it was pretty hard to see when we would have pixel when when we when we had pixels in intake when we had successfully intake in pixels we have the LEDs on the back to indicate what pixels we have we have different we have different we have different colors for different things so we have we have white for both pixels uh, we have we have purple if we only have uh, if we only have uh, if we only have a pixel on the left side of our claw, and we have yellow if we only have pixels on the on the uh, right side of our claw. Uh, we actually chose these colors because that's where we preload pixels, uh, and that's that's how we preload pixels in auto. The 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 next driver enhancement we have um, is is for is for our lift. We were having a we were having a hard time making sure we had consistent uh, drop positions. We were, and we were having a lot of bouncing. Uh, so to, so to help with that, we have preset positions. We, we our, dri our drivers go to the same positions every time. However, we found that sometimes we wanted more precision, so we actually do a, we do allow for manual control over the lift, which which also ha which also helps if we disconnect during. Um, during a match or something, because we have a button that will reset the encoder counts manually to get us back to our 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 uh, proper preset positions. Our final our final driver enhancement is for is for moving around the field, the drivetrain itself. Um, we actually have our max speed fairly low. We have it we have it at 0.7. Um, uh, this was to allow for like find our control by default. Uh, we have we we have two or the two triggers for driver one. Uh, what they do is they can override the max speed and increase it, and the second one will, and the second one will lower lower the speed. This allows for finer control than just the than just the joysticks alone will allow. Great, and so now you have a lot of driver enhancements. So could you talk to me about uh, what uh, sensors you need in order to use those driver enhancements? Yeah. So the main sensors we have are, are these. These are Rev V3 color sensors. However, we only use them for we we only uh, use them for the distance functionality. The other sensor we have is we use the built-in motor encoders, coders for the lift. Uh, and our and our and our final sensor is not actually for driver enhancements, but we use it um, in auto. Uh, our, our 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 odometry pods. So we so we use the go we use the go build odometry pods, um, which we have found to actually be quite accurate. Uh, we we use this in, we use three wheel odometry in conjunction with uh with the Roadrunner library uh for mo for motion profiling and pathing. So our autonomous is um our autonomous is a uh, uh, on the on the near auto it is a fifty point auto where we where we do our detection which. We, uh, we, so we use this camera here, which is we initially, which we found initially we were testing with the Logitech C two seventies, I believe. Uh, but however, we found that we couldn't properly see all, all the positions as well, so we had to switch to a wider angle camera. So these are our props. We chose to make them cylindrical uh, to to allow for them to, to the radially symmetrical. So no matter how they were placed, we would be they would be pretty similar. Um, uh, and we so another thing is we initially we're going to use the RGB color mapping um, for detection. However, we found that especially on the blue alliance, it would be pretty. It's was pretty inconsistent, especially in low light levels, um, and that was obviously a problem. So we switched to the YCRCB color mapping, which we found to be significantly more consistent. So our auto will then so we then drop our purple pixels. It's really nice again having claws like this because we can just set it on the ground and then release, and then we can back up. We don't have to worry about dropping from uh, from like the air and then being bouncing or the claw move or the pixel moving. Um, we then go back uh, and then we um, and then we and then we 
uh, drop our yellow pixel, and then park. We can actually park on either side of the backdrop, and we determine this by we have a JSON file that we can select during the beginning because our main philosophy behind our autonomous was to allow for it to work with as many people as possible. On our far auto, we do a bit more. Our far auto is actually a 55-point auto. It's the same be – the beginning starts the same. However, we, we utilize – we are able to utilize having uh, – utilize our claw to pick up an additional white pixel where we would have it. What the flaps allow us to do is prevent us from accidentally intaking more than, more than uh, two, uh, two pixels at, at once, or more, more having a total of more than two pixels. So this prevents, this prevents penalties, which could be a problem using other systems that could accidentally intake more. Um, we then go under the truss. We can either, they either go under the truss or under the stage door, again, depending on what JSON file we select. And then we drop our yellow pixel, and then we can park independently of the other decision of whether we go under the stage door or truss. Uh, and this flexibility, just, this flexibility just allows our auto to work with as many people as possible, uh, which we found to be one of the biggest things, because, because while having a higher scoring auto is great, uh, you're always going to be able to get more points combined than just one person solo. All right, so thank you, Team 21774. Uh, this has been uh, a really cool robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.